Welcome to this DKIX Academy presentation. This is a short introduction into autonomous system and autonomous system numbers. I'm going to explain what an autonomous system number is and why you need one to participate at an internet exchange for peering. I'm Wolfgang Tremmel and this is a DKIX Academy presentation. So let's go back in time in when the internet was young in 1982. It was quite a bit smaller than today, but the developers also already saw that it would grow and already saw it as a network of networks. So to make sure it could scale and uh, accommodate the, the growth they expected, they invented the term autonomous system. That's a part of the network which is under uh, control of exactly one entity. Each autonomous system was centrally assigned a 16-bit identification number and they thought that would be enough for, for quite some time. Fast forward today in October 2016 there were 55,972 active AS numbers. And uh, so already in 2001, they noticed that 16 bits for AS numbers is not nearly enough to accommodate future growth. So they started to extend the AS number space from 16 bit to, to 32 bit. So it four byte RS numbers. Today uh, all uh, modern routers support four byte AS number. You can no longer get a two byte AS number except you're very lucky and there is also no reason for a requesting one as everything works with four byte numbers nowadays. So but but what is an autonomous system? Let's go to the definition. An autonomous system is a connected group of one or more IP prefixes run by one or more network operators, which has a single and clearly defined routing policy. That's the definition. It's defined in RFC 1930 with exactly this wording. There were earlier versions, but uh, that's the up-to-date definition of, of an RS. But what does it mean? It says it's connected, so an RS is always continuous. All the systems in an RS are connected either via least lines, via Ethernet, or even via tunnels. Once an autonomous system falls apart, the two parts cannot communicate with each other. So this is the reason it's very, very important if you design uh, your network as an RS that you make sure that it's always connected. The next a group of IP prefixes. Please note we are not talking about routers here. It's basically the definition goes to the IP prefixes, the network prefixes. And uh, reason for that is you don't have to use a router. You can also run an autonomous system on a virtual box, on a virtual machine, inside another virtual machine. So mo mostly it's run on routers, but it doesn't have to. So it's about the IP prefixes, which are grouped together in an autonomous system. An autonomous system usually in the most common way is run by exactly one operator, but it can be more than one. For example, a, a large worldwide ISP can uh, delegate country operations to, to uh, another operator and they can run uh, an autonomous system jointly. And um, it only the only really, really important part is that it has a single and clearly defined routing policy. So, and this is also the most difficult to explain. Routing policy is how routing decisions are made. So if you forward traffic to one destination, usually for your whole autonomous system, 
is always the same. So if you say you're peering at DKIX, you forward traffic to a certain ISP via DKIX, this is the same for all your networks. And you do not define this for each single prefix, but for a group of prefixes. And this group then is called the autonomous system. So to summarize, you do not need a router, but you do need to have prefixes routed. So somehow you need a box which routes traffic. Most commonly you have one or more routers and each of your routers belong to an autonomous system running BGP. Okay, now we have the next term, BGP. What is BGP? BGP stands for Border Gateway Protocol. And this basically gives it away. It runs on the border of your network. So between, it talks to other ISPs, IXPs or customers. It was introduced in 1989 as a successor of an earlier protocol named EGP, that was the Exterior Gateway Protocol, and since then it was updated quite a few times. The current version of BGP is called BGP4, and it was defined in the form we are using it today in 2005. By the way, all, all these specifications uh, uh, publicly available at rfceditor.org. You can download them and read them and most of the time they are written in a way that everybody can understand them. So where does BGP run? It usually runs on a router and uh, it's doing protocol processing and packet forwarding on exactly one device. But you can also run it on a server. For example, uh, at DKIX we run BGP on our route servers. And the routers it runs are can be very, very small and or very, very large. If, if you check internet, there are uh, really, really cheap routers available which can run BGP. And uh, one of the key is that your router has to have enough memory. Just have a look how big the, the BGP routing table is. It is how many entries does it have. So to run a BGP on a router with a full routing table, you need enough main memory. Key elements of BGP are AS numbers. And uh, you cannot run BGP without having an AS number. If you want to try uh, an experiment, there are private AS numbers uh, you, you can just choose and use. Important, you cannot announce them on the internet, but if you want to try at home, uh, that's not a problem. If you want to run BGP publicly on the internet, well, this is the shopping list you need. You need an autonomous system, you need a router, and you need routable network prefixes. Yeah, you need an autonomous system. I'm going to get it in the, one of the next slides. You need a router which can run BGP. Well, you, as you are an ISP or otherwise you might not be watching this presentation, I guess you already have a router somewhere. So ask your vendor, check your documentation. Most routers nowadays can run BGP. And as I said before, having enough main memory is the key. You need routable network prefixes. You should already have some IP addresses assigned to you. And uh, now, can you announce them on BGP? Please check. Um, the easiest way, if you're not sure yourself, ask the party you got them from. And if you got them from a local internet registry like RIPE or ARIN, the probability is quite high that you can route them. If you got them from, an, from another ISP, ask them. Perhaps you cannot and you need new IP addresses. So what is an autonomous system good for? Let's, let's summarize. If you have an autonomous system, you can have multiple upstream ISPs in peering. You have full control over your outgoing traffic. You can optimize your tra outgoing traffic for cost and you can set up your own peering policy and have full control. Without an AS, uh, well, basically, you are at the mercy of your upstream 
ISP and need uh, just basically you cannot do much except uh, to accept whatever they are, however they are routing you. So this sounds good. You want an AS number? Uh, get one. AS numbers are globally unique, so some central authority must exist for handing them out. Uh, basically, the authority is IANA, the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, but they don't assign AS numbers to end users directly. They give, they delegated this responsibility to the local internet uh, registries. One of them for the, the Europe region is the RIPE NCC. Uh, if you are not in Europe, uh, check the map and uh, have a look who is basically responsible for your region and check their website. I'm not going to talk about what everything the road regional internet registries do, or otherwise I would be sitting here till tomorrow morning. So let's focus on AS number and um, as DKIX is mainly doing their business in Europe, with exception of New York, Dallas and Dubai, we focus on Europe in this presentation. The regional internet registry responsible for Europe, Europe is the RIPE NCC. Uh, and that is a French shorting, which I'm not going to read here because I don't speak French. And just remind that uh, RIPE is not the same as RIPE NCC. The RIPE NCC basically is the entity who hands out the AS numbers. The easiest way to get an AS number, just become a customer of the, of the RIPE NCC. You have to be a legal entity fill out the forms, pay the fee, and uh, request the AS number. They uh, want some um, justification, so you need to prove, or well, you need to tell them you want to be multi-homed, you want to peer, and that's basically it. You should, you should have your AS number within a week or two. There is also the possibility that you can get an AS number without becoming a RIPE MCC member. Basically, you can ask an existing member for, for it. They uh, become what it's called a sponsoring layer, a sponsoring local internet registry, and they request the AS number for you, and they may charge you for it, which is okay. So uh, if you do not want to become a member yourself, you can also go this way. So if you have your AS now, and uh, how can I root your how can you root your IP prefixes? In general, everything uh, slash twenty four or larger are routable via BGP. Smaller ones are as well, but they might not be uh, universally accepted by other parties. If you have just become new RIPE NCC member, you also can request IPv four and IPv six space. If you already have IPv4 or and or IPv6 addresses and uh, want to check if you can route them, check where you got that IP space from. And uh, if it's another ISP, either ask them if you are allowed to announce or that would be the not so good solution. You might have to give your current IP space back and might have to renumber. But uh, that's always down to your individual situation and cannot be uh, explained in general. Okay, and now start peering. And uh, thank you for listening. This is uh, Wolfgang Tremmel from the Kix Academy. If you have any more questions, email us, uh, let us know and uh, stay safe. Thank you very much. And bye-bye.